welcome to another episode of Cardio Metabolic Beat brought to you by the Cardio Metabolic Health Congress. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Keith C. Ferdinand, Professor of Medicine and Gerald S. Ferenson, Endowed Chair in Preventative Cardiology at the Tulane University School of Medicine and the Tulane Heart and Vascular Institute in New Orleans, Louisiana. Dr. Ferdinand is a nationally and internationally recognized cardiologist and has dedicated his career to improving patient care, particularly in racial and ethnic minorities. He also most recently was named a member of Louisiana's Governor's COVID-19 Health Equity Task Force and is a CMHC Senior Planning Committee member. CMHC is proud to announce that Dr. Ferdinand will serve in a new role as Educational Planning Advisor for Ethnic and Racial Disparities in Cardiometabolic Health, which will be the topic of our conversation today. Dr. Ferdinand, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. I'll start by asking, what do you envision for this new role and how will it influence CMHC's education? Well, I think CMHC is really forward thinking. If you look at cardiovascular disease and cardiometabolic risk factors, they're clear disparities. And if we don't address these, we're never going to change some of the real differences in cardiovascular and cardiometabolic outcomes, including heart attack, strokes, heart failure, chronic kidney disease. So it's really forward thinking, not only to look at the best evidence-based medicine across the literature, that's been developed in medicine, but how to best apply those pharmacotherapy and lifestyle changes to equally to all populations. Let's take a step back for a few moments to learn more about your beginnings in this work. When in your career did you begin focusing more heavily on the issue of ethnic and racial disparities in cardiometabolic health? And how did that impact your learning and or clinical approach? Well, early on in my medical training, I started to note in the literature there were clear disparities that were being seen in terms of cardiovascular and cardiometabolic conditions, especially in African Americans. I'm a child of the Lower Ninth War in New Orleans, Louisiana, and growing up in the segregated South, I was aware that many of my patients were being afflicted disparately by these conditions. After I became a clinical cardiologist, at that time I did interventions, pacemakers, et cetera, I became even more aware that if we were going to try to reverse some of these disparities, we have to address the underlying cardiometabolic risk factors. And that includes hypertension, where I've done most of my work, diabetes, lipids, and obesity. So it's not enough just to do procedures, to do interventions, but we have to underlie those risk factors and treat those risk factors and prevent those risk factors in order to decrease the disparities in outcomes. Dr. Ferdinand, how has your understanding of this work evolved since then? Well, Dr. Berenson is now passed, but if you know the history, Dr. Berenson identified in the Bugalusa Heart Study that cardiometabolic risk, including insulin resistance, obesity, and hypertension, start in early childhood. The Bugalusa Heart Study was a biracial community in Louisiana. And he would draw blood and do biometric measurements in young children. If some of those children unfortunately died because of an automobile accident or trauma, he had the ability to get autopsies and was able to show that the early underpinnings of atherosclerosis are not in adulthood, but actually in adolescence and the teenage years. He then dedicated himself to helping educate the community, including kids, about the ability to change the path to atherosclerosis in adulthood by the early adoption of preventive measures. So early on in my training, Dr. Berenson showed me the way to look not just at doing a procedure or putting in a pacemaker, but trying to identify hypertension, obesity, diabetes, early kidney disease, and do something to help people before they became an adult with a disabling condition. In your view, what are the most pressing changes needed within the field of cardiometabolic medicine to properly address ethnic and racial disparities? There are two things that we have to do to address disparities. One is recognize the impact of the social determinants of health. That's where people work, live, or play. You can actually look at 
the degree of heart disease, diabetes, chronic kidney disease based on zip code analysis. We call that geomapping. So that means that it's not enough to just look at the individual patient, but look at the environment in which the patient lives, food deserts, the inability to have a safe way that they can do aerobic activity, the inability to have family support. That's one thing. So those are the social determinants of health. These are the underpinnings that cause much of the cardiometabolic risk that we see. The other thing that we need to do is make sure that everyone has access to care. And that's not just going to the emergency room, but having an identifiable source of primary care and appropriate referral to specialists, including nephrologists, cardiologists, endocrinologists, and that clinicians take the evidence-based medicine that's being developed now and applied equally to all populations, regardless of race, ethnicity, sex, gender, social class, or geography. What has been the impact of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic? New Orleans is one of the hotspots for COVID-19 along with New York. We, of course, are a small city, but February 25th, 2020 was Mardi Gras. 300,000 people came into New Orleans. In March 9th of 2020, we had our first case. And when New York had their exciting, and when New York had their unfortunate increase in COVID-19 cases, we experienced the same thing in New Orleans. What we then saw, looking early on in the pandemic, is that African Americans, Hispanic Latinx population, some indigenous populations, were being affected by COVID-19 with more hospitalizations and unfortunately more death. We don't think the reason for that is genetics. In fact, many of the conditions that lead to death from COVID-19 are the same cardiometabolic conditions that we treat on a regular basis. Obesity, especially in black females, hypertension, diabetes, chronic kidney disease. Having then imbalances in these conditions led to an imbalance in hospitalization and unfortunately death related to COVID-19. So it's important that the Cardiometabolic Health Congress not only addresses these risk factors in order to prevent end-stage renal disease, heart failure, heart attacks, and strokes, but also that these populations have less of the underpinnings of comorbid conditions that worsen COVID-19. And final question, what can clinicians do to help reduce these gaps? First of all, we want to ensure that clinicians are aware that these gaps are real. This is not social science. We're talking about an increased risk of premature heart disease, death, heart failure, chronic kidney disease, strokes, blindness, and amputations. When you look at longevity itself, there's what I call the white-black death gap. And this has been happening, unfortunately, for decades. Black patients tend to die earlier from cardiovascular and cardiometabolic conditions. Again, this is not primarily driven by genetics. It is the hallmark of unbalanced and social determinants of health, access to care, health-seeking behavior, and the equal application of evidence-based medicines. What each clinician should do is overcome his or her biases and treat everyone the same, regardless of their socioeconomic status race, ethnicity, or social class. And as we develop some newer medicines, for instance, the PCSK9 inhibitors, the SGLT2 inhibitors, the GLP1 agonists, make sure that these relatively expensive medicines can be applied to all populations. If we have advances in pharmacotherapy and new approaches to lifestyle modification, and we don't apply them equally, then we're going to bake in the disparities that we see in cardiovascular risk, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and longevity itself. Thank you so much, Dr. Ferdinand, for your time and expertise. We are so excited to work with you in this new role. It's my pleasure. I think Cardiometabolic Health Congress will make a great contribution to medicine by identifying these disparities and addressing them in a very powerful and proactive manner. And thanks to all for listening. If you have any questions or you have any feedback on topics that you would like to discuss in future episodes, we would love to hear from you. You can email us at info at cardiometabolichealth.org. Thank you. And until next time.